Once again, goes for that four minute power room bottom, as we saw in game number one. They'd be doing that thing where they just go really aggressive so much when the enemy support leaves the lane. <laughs> see how these lanes seem to go. I'm, I'm certainly interested to see which way it will fall because the Lions have been pretty dominant in the laning phases in the series so far. But as pro, they've got. Um, I still don't think they've got strong lanes. Like they, they just don't seem to care. They're just like, eh, you know what? Screw the lanes. We'll 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 just come back by fighting. Young, that's the old as well. You know, VP. There's so much young talent on this squad. Almost every single player is uh, thirty is seconds relatively to unknown for the past kind of year or two years and has recently kind of come in and has just started beating everyone. It's, it's been very exciting to watch. A couple of players which uh, we have watched grow over this year-long period as well. Um, Ilias has been around for a while. He was with Na'Vi, GPK of course, started Gambit and then moved up from there. What do I think? A VP that won multiple majors. The battle um, oh, that's a really hard thing to take. There's something special about that VP, but there's something special about this VP. I think, yeah, they've, they've got the potential. Sure. I think so too. I think this team has so much potential. As long as they're not like a one patch wonder, um, next patch we'll see how it goes. But if this team, because that team, that VP was like strong in almost every patch, right? They just didn't yeah. perform as well as people expected them to at TI. Yeah, the major downfall. Hopefully this VP doesn't suffer from the same court curse as the uh, the old ones, as FNG starts his lane by bullying uh, the Phoenix. Go turn around with his hips. Maybe we'll fight up. Meanwhile down lane, we've got a disruption coming out of this force, setting up the God's Rebuke onto Ilias, just getting as much damage as they can onto his Omni, even going into some body blocks with the illusions as well to work a little bit of value. A couple of extra hits in onto this Omni. Hey, he also gets a Basilius every time he disrupts the Omni Knight. A little bit of mana region too. Feels good, man. So yeah, side lanes we we're saying kind of slightly aligned favored and probably both in the lanes, which is always worrying, but maybe they can do something at the end. Getting very low here to Nico baby. That spin along with the decays is uh, quite scary. Nico baby nearly mm. takes him down. Gotta be cautious. Meanwhile, bottom as for also getting chased away by Ilias. Good. Yeah, that's the thing. Athletic Kid will always be able to fall back to the jungle. It doesn't really matter how the Sven's lane goes. He's always able to uh, come back. Yeah, there's a little bit of zoning going on in the top lane. Bloodseeker got very low after the sword rip, and now he's been staying away from the creep wave for some time. He's only got three last hits, time being. Nico Baby looking to get that boot and just try to spin onto the Bloodseeker again once Jug is level three. <laughs> This is a very... Taking some pretty heavy hits from Limp at mid. Has to get back under the tower and pop himself a couple of tangos to uh, stay alive as uh, Limp and him continue trading. Quite violently. Oh, off bottom, Ilias. Taking some hits, but uh, Epilentic get actually turning it around to West 4 and giving him a decent amount of harassment. With that Heavenly Grace, they don't really want to turn around and hit the Omni Knight. has got that bonus strength on and the health region and all that good stuff. <laughs> So far, lanes are looking pretty decent for Alliance. Thought mid lane could be a bit hard for Death Prophet, but Limp is playing so aggressively. Up here, GPK is struggling to just find lasses even. 8 to 14, and the wave is coming back up on the hill. Yeah, Lim's having a great time in this middle lane, dominating his deck. I see about Snapfire is that she can't play from that far away. Her right click range is very, very small. For at least for a ranged hero, and Limp is just going to continuously take advantage of that with the spirit Top lane. but yeah, you know, this is problem for the uh, more it's not apparently. They just want to keep on chasing him away, keep on controlling him up. They've got a creep wave coming in, don't need to overextend for any kills, just keep the harassment going on for him, and uh, force him to... Got boots now, pops a mango, mm -hmm. ready for that next Blade Fury. He just needs FNG to maybe get two decays out onto the Bloodseeker first. A DM is like very safe, playing extremely safe in this lane. He's only got nine lasses because of how far back he's needed to be. Yeah, yeah. He's, um, not having a good lane to start off with here. 
And FNG yeah, also knows to take himself a few creeps as well. Up into two. And then getting the pull off. Yeah, FNG's spectacular job up in this top lane. Just playing for the XP first. Again, this lane only gets harder for Bloodseeker. Certainly not gonna get easier anytime soon. He's gonna have to come up with another way to uh, play in this early game if he wants to have uh, much game impact here. I mean, I imagine it's just gonna be a case of trying to play with the lanes and get him to farm under his tower and then maybe start rotating in some other lanes or even jungle with his blood, right? It's possible. It doesn't feel good to do so. Or maybe his team put pressure elsewhere and just try and draw away the support, get FNG out of the lane and then put it in full on one. But even then, I still think the joke is fine. Man, so. Oh yeah, definitely. And I mean, this is just a part of having a Phoenix support with the Bloodseeker. These blood rights, you know, can't get, can't be guaranteed onto these heroes. So Alliance can constantly make better trades. Look at mid, man. Oh my God. Limp. 33 yeah. to 19. GPK is just jungling. Dyer's top tower. Playing the smackdown on this game. This is yeah. GPK. This, this oh, he wants to steal the rune too. Very often. He steals oh, his he's rune. In the wound. GPK is, is left high and dry. He tries to come this in. This is absolute dominance. Yeah. Reliance. Dog. Able to secure that range creep at the very least for himself, but still GPK by no means happy. He's gonna have to walk back to base to get that mana back, to get that bottle refilled. Maybe he's gonna try and lane, but to be honest, I think he's probably just sitting in the jungle. Meanwhile, S4 is being real peppered in this bottom lane by Virtus Pro. They are not happy with this Mars' existence and they keep on getting his health ball down real, real low. So he's gonna have to lane back to base. It's actually the poorest of all the support, the cores in the game right now. Being very much bullied. Not a. This. He's not a Timbersaw this game. Against the Omni Sven, so there's a lot of harass damage that's quite annoying for him, but that's okay. His top and mid lane are doing so well. FNG coming in for the rune. Okay, he does have the kisses ready. Yeah, I might attempt to drop a tombstone here. Double damage is found. Save. He's gonna pick it up and uh, probably looking to uh, finish off FNG here. I wouldn't be surprised. In comes that uh, soul rip and a jump forward from save. Radiant but Hanskin's ready. Drops down attack. the disruption. They've got the ultimate Dark from Limp here as well. But actually, GPK is gonna throw in the more of his kisses. Can he track Limp though? Doesn't look like he can. The DP's a little bit too squishly for him to bring Radiant him down. Meanwhile, Ilias comes in from the side, looking to help out with this one. They can't find the tombstone though. And uh, that means that there's nothing much they can do about it. It's a, bit, li a little bit too far back. Oh, DM yeah, also TPing. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah, they want to protect. It lane bad. A lot of rotations coming out from BP, and I think Alliance should be quite happy with that. Just a little bit of chip damage, force the glyph away, free farm for the Juggernaut top. They get the Omni out of bottom. That leaves S4 to get some space too. Still creeps under his tower as well, so he's been pretty happy to uh, get himself a couple of <laughs> small creeps. Get himself back into the game a bit. Still a long way. DM though. DM's very fast. 455, 60 MS, you know, a lot of battling happen on the map, so he just walks right back top. Nico Baby, not yet level 6. Gonna get pressured up a little bit by these two. Where's his items on Nico? Ah, he's got a Morbid Mask. He's going for that straight uh, Mask of Madness first, before the face boots. So when, when he pops that Omni Slash, he's gonna have a crazy amount of DPS. Definitely the best build on Jug. We predicting Mask of Madness into Midas, like uh, we've seen some here. Nah, 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 nah. We going for <laughs> Juggernaut is not face Void. He doesn't even... <laughs> That, but you know, if that was a game to do it, the game with the feelings in it doesn't seem too bad with the attack speed. But no, I'm not. I'm not. It's got a broom handle so far, looking for that uh, iron talent if possible. I guess the big play right now we're looking for is limp uh, with his next exo. Is he gonna make another play onto mid or is he gonna go bottom? Game is starting to slow down right now as the heroes are getting to like level five, level six areas and. Both teams kind of just respecting the power levels of each other. Yeah, there is a lot of respect, and everybody's kind of just tiptoeing around. No each first other. blood. No uh, first uh, blood. No. 
Uh, last game we it was wait until we had an ultimate. I think in the bottom lane until we saw first blood. I believe that was a Mars. I want to say so. S no, it was S4 and S Timber. Got the. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yummy night. Here we go down to the bottom lane. They're going onto the Mars S4. He is absolutely going to get his mushroom sorted down here by GPK with the rotation in with the modern's kiss and the god strength from the Sven. Goodbye, little Mars. They made the rotation. Yeah, and GPK. Very nice. He also gets the first blood. Um, that he really needed that because he was falling very far behind the DP, almost a thousand gold. Look what he's queued up this game. Uh, is this the Thompson build? Is it? Is it gonna be that first item E blade? Gold scepter, first item queued up. I mean, it's pretty good against Juggernaut. That's for sure. It really is. And uh, should protect you from the exorcisms for a while as well, right? When you use it on yourself? Yeah, but the siphon is just. So. That's why you typically don't see the ghost scepter come out against DP. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it is really quiet laning phase. Like, DM's just chilling top, laning into the juggernaut. Oh. It hasn't ruptured him or anything. They're just kind of trading creeps. Uh, there it is. But Seeker's doing really well. He's actually above the juggernaut in network now, so DM has come back in this lane massively. Ever since Undying left top and DM walked back top, he's been having a pretty good time. And bottom lane, they're gonna pop the Exo there. Gonna be the first tower being taken. And the second tower top for Virtus Pro, as they brought a lot of heroes up here, committing to this. Yep. Just making that mirror movement, trading the bottom tower Dyer's from the top, top tower. tower. We see it all at the time. Top tower has fallen. But, uh, well, no one really cares, to be honest. The carry just means the carry's probably going to move to the uh, opposite lanes. I'll do the old switcheroo, and life will go on as normal. Sven having a much better game this time around, not having to lane into the timber. Level eight and a half, top of the net worth, even more than this Death Prophet who was just giving GPK the beating. He's yeah, doing it. He's just evened out. <laughs> He's doing it, by the way. He's going for that E blade on BK. You guys are watching Nico Baby farm this beautiful stack. But you mentioned that Hobson E blade Snapfire build is right now. Yep. And now they're looking towards the middle tier one tower. Fortification immediately comes out from Alliance. S4, FNG, they are here. But now the Rupture comes down onto S4. He's trying to run himself away. Unfortunately, FNG, well, the cookie actually sends Sven down to the low ground, making it like a little bit longer. FNG's actually going to be able to heal himself up. Drop the Flesh Golem and now maybe turn things around. Sven controlled up inside that arena, taking a decent amount of damage to the Mortal Kids to come through. But uh, won't do a whole lot of work. And now the ultimate throwing down onto Sven. That demonic purge is on top of him. But Supernova is response from Virtus Pro, forcing Alliance back again. It's She's just burning up, but is going to be kept alive by the healing ward, just about. So a very interesting engagement here at mid. No one actually falling, still just one kill in this game, despite having a team fight. <laughs> Nobody died. Just dropping all the ults, just to help each other, <laughs> keep each other alive. Yep. I mean, Nico Baby still does have this Omni Slash, she can maybe drop onto Ilias if he wants it, but there's a Guardian Angel already available. There are some Omni Knights that don't scale up the uh, ulti right away, but Ilias, he knows how valuable this is. Oh, he does. Flash. Oh, I, bring oh, I hate this. We d this happened before, game. right? This yeah. happened before. This means we're gonna say the full thing. Oh, they're not me. I think everyone's kind of just content as a cucumber to sit around and farm this game. No one really wants to make any plays. VP tried to push in for the middle tower. He traded a couple of ultimates, and they're just like, eh, we'll call it even. And just went back to farming. And I thought, like, yeah, sure, agreed. They don't want to make any moves either. They've got this juggernaut, which they feel is farming up pretty damn nicely. He's heading in towards this battle fury to try and farm up even quicker. Meanwhile, the Sven, he is going in towards the Echo Saber and uh, getting some ancient stacks for himself as well. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. That's for really that core that's just struggling at the moment to try some farm. He's also just in the hardest lane at the moment, waiting for creeps to come into him. He's quite far again away from this uh, blink dagger. Yeah. Really have any options run around and use his arena? DM, but he doesn't really have backup quite yet. 
doesn't really want to uh, be finding engagement until he has that uh, blink dagger in. Virtus Pro, they want to push him down even further. They're moving heroes over, but S4, his game sense is sharp. Look. And he TPs back into the smoke for his team. So um, escape into a smoke to look for some revenge or maybe look for to kill at mid. GPK would Could be a, a big target. kill here. Yep. And the tower take right after. They want to pop the extra here. And skin gets the disruption. If he comes in to hold back, Lin is going to make a difference. I don't think so. Arena comes down. The damage is through and they will get it down. The summary is just a little bit too late. Now they've got the supernova to try and save the spend. It's a pretty nice job, but they have to deal with these tombstones first. And they are struggling to do that. The sunray across is going to deal a little bit of damage to the masters. They force alliance back, but not nearly enough. And now they can come back in and look to take this tower. Virtus Pro, I think, have Kind of lost his fight, and now the Omni Sash comes through, jumps himself back around all over the place, and will be able to finish off save. FNG will get the kill. Fortification used to get that switch on the tower, but the middle tier one surely will fall here. Though I say that, defense coming back in. DM's here as well, throwing down the blood rights, but it doesn't matter. Alliance have taken it, they get the tier one first, and that is a big step forward for them. But will Virtus Pro want to make a similar play when they are all back alive again? I don't think they can. They don't have the Goshant available. No one Goshant more minute left. Supernova. Yeah, and no easy just initiation form right now. Actually, Bloodseeker does have the Atos. Maybe they can use that to try and do something, but they need to take this mid tower back right now. Radiant Alliance, when that Exo's back up, they're just gonna invade Dyer's your triangle and tower. never leave attack. if they have the option. So you can see BP just grouping up around the mid. Exactly. It's nighttime, gonna have to go pick up the bounty runes first. Do indeed move around, get them, uh, get them little stashes of gold as BP mount their attack. Yeah, they 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 do really want to force this, huh? They've got a catapult. Warcry to come in, start dealing with the direction of the tower. There is no fortification available from the Radiant, oh. and immediately just unleashing onto the FNG. But yeah, you managed to get out of the tombstone. That means uh, Virtus Pro can't really fight into this. Like they have no way to jump in and destroy that tombstone, so they will just have to back themselves off. Yes. Big problem that GPK can't actually come in and, and kill off this tombstone most of the time. Oh, well, they're there for a very long time under this tier one tower. Axel's up in 20 seconds. Ooh, they're gonna drop the multi for this. All right, all right. Alliance, they're finally gonna say, hey, you know what, guys? You, you can take it. You've earned it. You've done a good job. And now, well, the uh, Lord of Kisses with the Supernova is gonna fit a hand skin, but it's only hand skin. This is a pretty good trade, all things considered, for Alliance. So now. Uh, Pro, they won't have their god strength, they won't have their supernova, they won't have their more of those kisses, like a ton of ultimates on cooldown for them. And I just pretty much have free reign from that for the next kind of minute. Yeah, they got that level 2 army slash up. DP about to hit level 12 as well. The level 2 EXO. They could just go Roshan actually. 70 seconds not on the Sven's Ooh, ultimate. I'll have to come back here. Gotta be tempting. Still only four Gotta be. kills Radiant in this game. Scanning. For the twin. Having Very slow game right now. Both teams, uh, you know, they're, they just want the items. They just want to get their I uh, timings. They don't want to mess up one bit. This is an elimination game. One kill every four minutes. This is what we're saying. And it doesn't feel like Dota, does it? It doesn't. He's nearly there though. He just needs to uh, finish off his ancient camp and he is going to have that battle fury completed. 17 minutes and he's got himself a mask of madness and a battle fury and phase boots. Feeling pretty good on the juggernaut. Not, not yeah, he is. Spectacular, but pretty damn good. He will be able to keep up with this then. The problem for Nico Baby is this game is definitely just the Guardian Angel. Like, oh, top. Got one. Oh dear, yeah, they go fishing and they catch themselves a DM fish who gets taken down very, very quickly inside that arena. Tower and the tower too. That's a level 2 EXO, so VP, you know what that means? Enemies down a big key spell to try to do something ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at Nico Baby, but... the foot, and they're gonna try and go into Nico Baby the cookie. It was a nice idea, but it doesn't quite land, and that means the Juggernaut's gonna be able to Radiant's spin himself to safety. Is under attack. Yeah, I'm not sure even if that cookie did land, would, they would have been able to do something with it. They have no stuns really. Like the Sven stun has a projectile speed, and by then Juggernaut would have just been able to Blade Fury, kick him out of the lane at least, right? That's what uh, we're able to accomplish. Mm -hmm. 
Radiant's top tower is under attack. So, that is pro. What, what is their idea of a play? Do they want to try and position themselves for Roshan? Do they want to try and take this final tier one tower at bottom? Or do they want to invade the enemy jungle, get some vision down, and start setting themselves up for a more aggressive mid game? Illusion. They might just want to wait for the BKB first. Oh no, they smoked under a ward. And they're about, what, 800, 700 gold away from this BKB too? Ooh, if this goes bad for them because of this ward. Oh, oh they rushed the illusion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that illusion was um, well within smoke range as well, but you know, DM a little bit Radiant's premature, just, uh, you know, attack. really wanted to uh, wrap to that, that first profit. Know how he feels. That feels bad. That smoke, absolutely doing nothing. Epileptic Kid just goes back, farms up. That was definitely not a call from Epileptic Kid. Every time he calls for a smoke, it's when he's got like a plea item. Yeah. Somebody maybe getting a little bit premature that play. Ilias does have another smoke ready though. That he does, that he does, ready to go again. But uh, this time they're going to be fighting ultimates into ultimates because this Death Prophet does have Arexism back. They have Arena, they have everything on Alliance, so I'm not even sure if they want to try and go for this. But I guess with this BKB on the horizon for Reflected Kid, it's probably a good time for them to try and make some action happen. I think I'm starting to remember there was a time where Juggernaut Die. fought against Omni Knight and I think it was also Nico Baby who did it and he had like a nullifier that time. It worked out pretty well that game, if I recall cor correctly. I think it did too. I think it did too. Radiant I think it scanning. We're impressed by it. Team that one. Oh yeah, it was against Mud Golems. They were playing mm -hmm. Omni Radiant's and under attack. Yeah. And uh, they actually picked the Juggernaut into the Omni Knight. So there's a lot of people who always doubt, like, why would you Radiant pick Juggernaut into Omni? But, you know, Alliance are pretty confident with it. Radiant Here's the Roshan. He could maybe still bottom, though. He's not coming back yet. Defend this Rosh play. I'll just tear to tower. And uh, let's not forget, they've also got the uh, Shadow Demon Demonic Quest. They don't even necessarily need the Malphite. They're going for this Roshan. He really's going to come down. Escort trying to make something happen here. But of course, he can't stop the pace of Roche. Now the Aegis goes into the hands of the Epileptic Kid Alliance. They're still going into this. They really want to try and squeeze this lemon. But uh, the Spencer just finished that TP. Get himself away. The end might not be so lucky as uh, Escort tries to run him down. Nico Baby running forwards with the Spin Spear. Just about connects onto DM. And Nico Baby should be able to bring him down. Although, Glimmer. he's invisible. He's got the Glimmer. He's running one way. Are they are going to predict this? DM turns around, throws down the Aetos to hold back DP. He's running to the trees, turns around again with the Blood Rite, trying to get himself out. The Crystal won't quite reach, neither will the Poison. Got another uh, Magic Cloak here as he runs himself away. Glimmer Cape oh, down wow. to the south. Does he actually get out of it? They still see him though. DM, he has to try and get himself oh, away with the TP. They don't predict it with the Spear because the Spear is not available and he will get himself oh, away. Wait. The great escape it from DM. Dude, VP literally just got away with murder, right? They got the Aegis, they had to pop BKB, they had to do everything to just get the Sven out of there. The one hero that Alliance might have been able to kill also survives, and they bought so much time while Epileptic Kid was able to push his bottom lane all the way to the tier 1 tower, and now he has Gosh strength again. That's how much time DM just bought him. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, and Alliance don't have Exo Radiant's anymore. Top tower is under attack. Next yeah, minute gonna a, be a bit rough. Dyer's bottom tower what a messy fallen. Roche though, like what a messy, messy Roche. It took them such a long time to make the decision to actually go into that pit. And then they were just getting rained on Dyer's by the spit of Mortimer. And that stuff burns. Top tower has fallen. Definitely. But Alliance, you know, I think they should be just happy with splitting up the map Radiant's right now. I don't think Nico Baby really feels comfortable joining up in the team fights quite yet. He wants to play that split push game. He knows he's pretty invincible because there's no way to stop this spin TP. And BP constantly gonna have to go back and defend. Radiance top tower is under attack. There's the epileptic kid, he's going for the basher. He knows he needs this. Like, oh wait, wait, what? Goshrend? Uh. <laughs> that was a misclick. Oh boy. Whoop. They're gonna see this too. They're gonna ping that out. Yep, they are. They played together. He's just like, ah, I don't even need this spell. Uh, so yeah, game's gonna slow down even more now, folks. You thought you thought because we had a Aegis, we were gonna be going for it, but nope. They can't. They really can't. 
without the gosh strength. It's kind of gonna be. So he's got 80 seconds until it's back. He's got two minutes. So yeah, basically, he's uh, he's gonna have about 90 seconds to make a play with this Aegis now. Not ideal. Or, they're looking for a fight right now. Even though there's an Aegis up, like they know without the gosh they can't battle, right? So. Smoke up from Alliance, very good call from them. S4. I'm not sure they want to go on the Blood Sister. He's definitely the tankiest hero on the side of VP. Apart from the Sven, he's got a Plate Mail, a Glimmer Cape, plenty of magic resistance. Right. And uh, don't forget that six armor talents. Wait. Yeah, holy Radiant's smoke. 50. Wait, is that attack. right? 52 magic resist on the Blood Sister? I think it's just bugged, probably, for me. Oh, yeah, he has another shot. Uh, I'm good that as well. Uh, yeah, he's why. got another shot. Yeah. Good luck killing DM. This is one tanky little dude. <laughs> With a war cry, he's sitting on 44 armor. It's a Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. This. Um, you don't want to jump the Bloodseeker, that's for sure. You do not. Uh, that, is, that would be considered a bad move. Well, yeah. Check out. Walk around. We're gonna go in. This time it's gonna be the Undying first. He's gonna just straight up pop the Tombstone and they're gonna turn around and destroy this one of VP. So they're gonna throw out a couple of spells while GPK gets to work for the Tombstone. Done so. S4 trying to play around that Tombstone. He wants Supernova incredibly brave and uh, they get killed off pretty instantly. We want them. Have to put the BKB. Stop himself getting killed off by the Mother's Kisses. That's that's a kick come forwards. Looking for the Juggernaut. Nico Baby can't quite get the dodge onto that stun. Now he has to play around. Hands again. Uh oh, he gets found. Now the Omni Sash comes through onto the Sven. Can he do enough damage? Actually, bring down as fast like he can, but now Nico Baby's in some trouble. He's starting to suffer a little bit longer, getting back to his team, regrouping on Alliance, but uh, they are up two men down. They can't take this engagement. They're going to take the Aegis, and they're going to leave. That's also a double buyback from VP, though. That's a two for two, and two buybacks from VP. So a huge win from Alliance. A Sven did have an Aegis. He had to pop the Omni there. I'm not sure if he had to, but he did. It was like 30 seconds left on that Aegis, so he's going to be happy about that, at least, for Epileptic Kid. Omni gonna be on cooldown for some time. Also the EXO. I don't think BP is done. They want to keep going right now Dyer, while Alliance don't have these two big key team fight spells. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Hammering down now on the middle tier two tower. GPK blasting away with the little shredder. Oh Mars! No S4, he's so dead here. Man, this is not the that you want to be hanging around in. No one. Bye bye. Uh, Hanskin throws in the disruption. You know, it makes his suffering last a little longer. Thank you, Hanskin, but that is most definitely a dead Mars. S4 only had one death, and now he died like back to back instantly. <laughs> Feels bad, man. He TP'd into a vision, like a word, right? Lions didn't have any vision on the bottom side either. I'll take that as tribute. Maybe he should have been a bit more careful with where he was going when he revived. It's gonna it's okay, he has another 40 second timeout to think about his decisions. Death tax. What he wants to do next. And, uh, think about his mistakes, think about what he's done. Done uh, child. Two minutes until Roshan could spawn. That is when the time is going to start, and that is when we shall know the next objective for both these teams. But that is pro. They're feeling strong, even though there's no real gold advantage here. They just feel like uh, Athletic Kid's a king. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. He's not though. Jug is uh, just as fun as him. They are neck and neck at this point, and Nicker Baby's heading his way rather alarmingly quickly towards an Scaddy. And it's interesting comparing the two items because Nicker Baby's clearly going in for these bigger items, and when he hits his Scaddy, I think he's going to feel much stronger than the Sven. Sven, meanwhile, he's going for the more budget items. Vanguard, which he's Dyer's obviously going to turn into Abyssal very shortly. Echo Saber, Mask of Madness, you know, Nicker Baby has one as well, but BKB's not exactly a huge item either. Dyer's it's all about the little build ups for Epileptic Kid to try and make him feel stronger Dyer's earlier on, whilst uh, Juggernaut's just attack. trying to maximize farming potential and uh, get these big items on. But Nico Baby's not going to be able to feel comfortable uh, foot pushing into the high ground Dyer's as well anymore because of the Abyssal Blade that Epileptic Kid. True. Radiant's goes up, now you have a way to be able to cancel that Blade Fury TP Nico. Got that Scotty complete. It is really nice in slowing heroes down. On top of them, there's a lot of healing coming out from Virtus Pro as well. Phoenix, Radiant the Omni Knight. Scanning. Interesting. Look at this play right here. Oh, 
Nico, I think it's spotted out on the creeps though, possibly. Smoke up. Dyer's bottom tower is coming under in. attack. Oof, this is a right. tense situation. This is it. It's a big fight. Ten kills. Going the other way though. In a nearly 30 minute game, it looks like they might actually just kill each other. Let's see. GPK might be the target they want to jump on. Jump head arena is going to come down. They're going to try and target GPK, but the invisible blade comes out from the spread, immediately turning it around onto the map. He's dead instead. But they need to get themselves out. Now the zero blade comes out onto himself, but they immediately turn around and try to deal with the egg. But Epileptic is doing so much damage, they will kill the egg, but it's a high, high cost. Nico Baby, he needs to turn around and use the Omni Slash. Will do exactly that, but he's doing no damage due to the GA. Meanwhile, they'll just about keep the death form alive for a little bit longer. Yours as well. They're keeping her alive, but unfortunately, the jug is down. Maybe they can kill the Snapfire. It's then for as well to the damage of flip i can't believe they kept the death prophet alive but they did and they will take the fight because of it two heroes remaining on alliance one hero left on the side of furnace pro a scrappy brutal engagement alliance narrowly coming out on top but really i mean it, it's it's quite a hollow victory you lose your juggernaut you lose your mars Radiance but nevertheless limp is, is, a, is a happy happy ghosty lady Oh, he's gonna have Shiva's now. That's gonna make him even tankier. My, but man, Henskin, that disruption was on point oh, onto the Death Prophet, and then the Yules come out. Yo, that Exo did so much damage in the fight. The Guardian Angel kept the Sven alive just long enough to bring the Jug down, but once that's down, you don't really have anything against this uh, massive physical team fight damage from Alliance. Nope. And uh, I should also say, like, they committed a lot into killing that egg. That egg placement was so good because it allowed the Sven to just hit and do so much clear damage on the Jug and the Undying. And that's how they were able to even bring down FNG. If he was alive, the heals from him would have been extremely annoying as well. My goodness. What a team fight from these two teams. Really locking horns and. The clutch plays, uh, I mean, Hanskin has to be a standout performer. Once again, the Shadow Demon proving to be the most value pick for Alliance in this series. Turning the teamfight around with that disruption onto the DP whilst her exorcism was still going on, and then she can turn around, get off the Spirit Siphon, and yield herself up and survive that one. And now she's rocking up with the Shiva's Guard. She's, she's playing with the big boys almost. 0.4k net worth. About to hit 1.5. Five. Very yep. scary stuff, but Roshan is being taken by a Epileptic Kid. They need to do something about this. They can't let him get away with this for free. They must know it's going on, but at the same time, do they? They right now pings out from FNG. It's dying fast. Yeah, they need to do this now. FNG is going to move across, uses the decay, sees what's going on, but it's just too late. They've taken down the Rushan already, and he's going to be able to take both the Aegis and the Cheese. I can't believe Alliance let it happen again, but they're going to try and make a play from this. Oh, yes. Onto the spin, but now he jumps forward. A Vessel Blade forward onto Nico, maybe along with the Supernova as well. Is there anything he can do against it? The spin away, but he gets back and taken down by Epileptic here. They will kill off Nico, baby. They will be able to get the Supernova in response, but with this rupture out onto the DP, she's in some trouble, and there's the disruption bolt coming through. And Taken down limp from the air. Uh, wow. Oh, a very cool spell, aren't you? Meanwhile, oh damn, S4. I think he could be okay. He's got a blink dagger in three seconds, a full stack of one, Dyer's turns around with the gods of Buke, and will be able to get himself back to the high ground, okay. but still Virtus Pro taking that fine. I mean, to ask, like, what was with the hesitation? Why didn't Alliance go into that pit any sooner? Well, they didn't know it was up already, and Shadow Demon wasn't nearby either. They had no intention of taking that engagement Dyer's while the Omni Slash was still on cooldown, or even checking it. They weren't expecting BP to just go Dyer's in like that. But as soon as they came out, they're like, Oh, guys, they have to use Goshen for this fight. Let's take the engagement, even if they have Aegis. But Sven still had about 7 seconds or so left on that Goshen. Use that time to just commit onto the Juggernaut. Big plays from Epileptic Kid to not like try to run away while it was running out but try to kill the dragon Dyer's said that last badge though oh man that Dyer's was pain for nico baby he was 100 percent out of there with that blade fury if he did not get hit i know i know that's that one's really gotta hurt they'd already used a rupture onto the dp as well so it wasn't even like Dyer's they had that one barracks. available to tour as he was running out they get a Rax. Yeah, but S4 comes in, manages to catch the Bud Seeker in Arena, but uh, as we've seen before, this guy is absolutely yoked. Like, he is not going down easy. They're going to throw down the Demonic Purge, everything being dropped onto this Bud Seeker. He throws a load of onto himself, but surely, surely they can bring him down, and they will be able to do so eventually. The end of the fight back, though, they want to make this into something, and they have to deal with the Tombstone first. The Blade across, though, on top of the Death Prophet. Death Prophet getting pretty low. The Omnitash coming through as well as well. Let's get in, actually, the one who's going to die, but that's only the Ages, but it's also his Godfrey. Supernova gets turned around upon Napolo that one up alliance look like they might be taking this engagement 
but Azilia is going to fall as well. Now just trying to run themselves away. The spear moves the collector kid over the cliffs, helping them out a little bit. But Hanskin comes across, needs the disruption. That means he can get on top of him. Limp actually down to the low ground, won't get jumped on by a collector kid. He's running them around in circles, but this Fen is most certainly going to fall here. As a right click connects, they bring down the Fen. They take this fight and they get a buyback out of DM as well. So Alliance take a big slap back, but now they need to come running down mid and try and force out some of these buybacks or take a barrack off their own. Oh, that Guardian Angel came out Radiance way attack. too late. You cannot let your Sven die with this Guardian. Even if he does have that Aegis up Alliance taking such a nice fight. I cannot believe I, I thought Esra was a madman to go in onto that Bloodseeker. Yeah. But that worked out and DM like was trying to sacrifice himself, but his team still got caught out. They, they, they just kind of, I don't know what the shot call in there was, but they were obviously trying to look for a weakness. They thought they found it, and they just overcommit. So now S4 goes down the zoning arena. Very nice. That's a Rax back. Yep. It's gonna be an even game again, no bad. And guess what happens when BP's alive? They're gonna run back at them. Oh, they're gonna run down mid? Okay. So the tug of war in the middle lane continues as Lions take the barracks back, evening the score. I mean, there's still a range barracks alive for VP, so... Oh, there's that. There's a DD here, though. Nicker, baby. Oh, he's, he's gonna be tempted. He's gonna be licking his lips and thinking, guys, is there anything we can do with this? Yeah, I also oh, want to mention... How crazy are we feeling? He doesn't have God Strength yet. I'm sorry, uh, Army Slasher. So he's gonna wait for that. They do have the bottled up the DD, though. Next fight is gonna be pretty crazy. You know why? Shadow Demon has an Aghanim. He's gonna use that onto the... Then... And we're gonna see what this Omnisage is gonna be able to do. Yeah. Yeah. You can chain them up, or you can just dump them all simultaneously for the burst damage. Honestly, a legitimate strategy. There's a lot Hanskin can do with this Agonim. It's a really good pickup from him, and the range he can cast it from as well. Like, that, that, is, that is like a screen away he can do it, because he's got the telescope and the Aether lens. <laughs> and the cast. That is a lot of range. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got a blink dagger, by the way. So just in case you're worried, he's not yeah. gonna get it off. Hanskin always it's... gets it off. What if you had that kind of range in real life? You know, Aether Lens telescope. You can be sitting at your computer, you know, using your Three arm to like it reach into your refrigerator. Yeah, the dream, really. Would be right now. Top top that, that this spell is going to be absolutely key. And also just slowing down the spend. Like, the guy does not have an axe. He is not quick. Uh, the only thing he's got is the Abyssal Blade. Get on top of the We've been seeing... We've been seeing more of these uh, spend players not going for Aghanims. They're like, the other items providing more for oh. them. No, I but Reddit said it's OP. I'll take that well, that's the thing about meta, right? It's constantly changing. Just that because builds. pro players know how to play into it as well doesn't mean it. Anyways, 8k gold advantage for Alliance. They have now got those ultimates up. The double damage is still available for the Juggernaut, and I imagine Alliance, they want to do something with this. BP. Well, BP walking straight they are actually going to smoke up again. They, their initial smoke didn't work out because the Alliance just instantly backed off, right? They know they need all their skills up to be able to fight. Now BP going to do it again. This is like a 50-50 engagement into a DD Juggernaut. Could be huge. This could be huge. But they bro, smoke if they up too. find the right engagement, this could still be good for them, but it's a big ask. It's a big, big ask. The they see the, the DD? Maybe. They're him. They're going in, but they get there to want to purge out onto him immediately. He has to go in. He has no other choice. The super is thrown down on top of them as well. And let's get trying to get his damage off. They focus down the ass. And they spend instead of the uh, egg. Oh no! And now they're actually going to lose Nico, maybe an FNG. And hands get simultaneously. Oh dear, that's just too much damage around this team. But Limp, he's still trying to make some plays here. I'm not sure he's going to be able to, though, as he's being cut out pretty badly as GPK finishes off S4 around the side. And, uh, well, that's going to be fight over, folks. They will lose Ilias right at the end as Anskin drops him. A very, very weird fight there. It's epileptic. I mean, I think some of them went for the egg. Some of them went for Epileptic Kid. They couldn't make up their mind. How, how did Spen survive that? Oh, the Shadow Demon Purge, it already ran out, right? The yeah. Snapfire decided to jump into the back lines going for Hanskin, so he couldn't throw the purges on anymore. So, Nico Baby really hesitated in dropping that Omni Slash onto him. 
because if the guardian angel comes out and if the omni goes on cooldown that's like the worst case scenario for alliance so he doesn't use it he pops a spin and that just made it such an awkward engagement for alliance already that being said limp's death profit is still an absolute beast right now like, even <laughs> though the is. jug died wasn't really able to get anything off this exo is just doing an insane amount of damage at the moment managed to hold off BP and Juggernaut is back alive. It's like that fight really didn't accomplish anything for either sides, essentially. Dyer's top tower mm -hmm. is under attack. But one thing to say Dyer's is top uh, tower has Abyssal apparently has a better cast range than Omni Slash. Because <laughs> yeah, he actually popped yeah. the Abyssal before Nico Baby could get his Omni off. And that's how that fight even started off. Epileptic Kid, he's really quick these yeah. plays right now. I think with Telescope it gets close, but um, this will play definitely. Regeneration! This, uh, these fights, every single one has been so nail-bitingly close. Like, that one, instance from losing both the Sven and the Egg, instead both survive. Alliance kind of lack the uh, the focus, and because the Jug is spinning, he can't so really finish off the Sven, so it gets very awkward. Now we're back to, uh, well, an even game, uh, which we've been saying a lot, <laughs> because it's true. It's very, very close. Roshan will be respawning in 10 seconds, and that is what everybody's eyes will be upon. This one is huge, though, as pressure or Aghanims. Both amazing for Alliance, because DP wants a second Exo. Uh, VP also want a second Goshrend. What's they got? Want the eggs. Aghanims. Eggs, yeah. Then Both would love it. want it real yep. bad. Okay. Yep, yep. Both carries Juggernaut, exactly. Radiance Hit that quick slash. Hold on to your This is it. This is the big fight right here. Hold me. Radiant are scanning. Satanic on Sven now. I love that Blood Kid. Like everyone else is just like, oh, don't go into Roche Pit. We, we gotta we gotta feel it out first. And that Blood Kid just pops the walk around and just kind of comes charging <laughs> in, like, yeah, Roshan. No, no, no. <laughs> Wait. We need to do this tactically. Oh, okay, sorry. Ooh, guess what GPK is? Level 25. That's big. Oh, Daedalus. Oh, no. He did so much damage in the last fight with this already, with a level 20, yeah. and now he's level 25. This is going to be berserk. I mean, GPK has had such a bad, like a bad early ages. game. We kind of forgot about him, didn't we? And now look at him. That was so brutal. Have better items than, like, Oh, they really don't, huh? What's up? On BP. I was thinking maybe he has um, Spell Prism or something like that. Oh, Alliance get the Spell Prism, of course. Death Prophet. Spell Prism. Big item. What a bounty! BP just holding back. Both teams really holding back here. Who's going to make the first move? Who's going to make the first play? Do Alliance go for it? Do uh, Divertus Pro go for it? Who wants to commit to the fights? Well, my question has been answered for me. As Divertus Pro, they want to go for it. They may well just find it. S4, he's a little bit separated from his team right now. This could be extremely costly if they find him a blink away just in time. Is it enough to keep him alive? He's sitting behind this tree. He's disguising himself very well. They pop the tombstone. They need to go for this now. Oh, they pop the Exo. Pro, they dare back away. Alliance, they can't let them escape. They need to jump somebody here. And Stinty's ready with the blink in and with the ultimate. The rusher comes down onto S4 to try and control him up. And now Sven pops the god's strength and all hell breaks loose. S4's going to be the first target here. The Sendrai scale stops him. We'll be able to take him down. The only such coming towards the GPK and the loser more. On towards epileptic as well. They can maybe try to cut through him. They try to cop the GM on Twin, but immediately purged off by him. But it doesn't matter. They've got so much damage. The crit comes through, but the disruption as well to save Nico Baby's life. But he's running out of spells. He needs to get himself away from this. But he's just surrounded by heroes. Tries to fight up into DM. Meanwhile, the spend is trying to deal with epileptic. Uh, can they do deal with epileptic kid actually? Limp and S4 just turn around and tear the spend apart. And they don't lose anyone on Alliance except for S4 and Undying, who both buy back into the engagement. And now they can run. Into this road pit, and there's no way Virtus Pro will be able to contest this one. Oh, and just and in case PD. they wanted it, by the way. Oh. A nice double damage. Gabe and says, Nice fight, guys. Here you go. I'm so surprised that VP decided to take that fight. Epileptic Kid, he was sitting behind the trees, hoping to just gosh it and go in, even though Death Prophet already popped that Exo. It looked like they could have just got out. Yeah, he was he tried so to... out of position though. He, was, he tried to, like, I think he tried to like cookie up the high ground and just kind of drop everybody, everyone with his little shredder. Which, in fairness, we've seen happen before. Like that spells hella dope. Radiant's they got on me. Yeah. 
and saw that his Omni wasn't there to save him, so... He, he saw Hanskin, and he took the opportunity to try and burst Hanskin. Again. And that's what happened, because as long as Hanskin's alive, with this Aghanim's Purge, the Sven can't really move around in the fight. Second lane of Barracks, bottom lane, could, could be considered. Exo sort of slowed him down. Oh no, another Exo. Limp is ready. He's got that spell prison. One of his kisses coming on over the top, trying to force them away. Get off our high ground, god damn it. They are not listening. Alliance don't care. All his kisses run out, and they are straight back up here. Tombstone even being dropped as well. An obnoxious tombstone right in front of the tower. Daring Bird of Furs come and kill it. Nico will spin. Sven's coming back. Keeping in the middle of everybody. What in the play here, guys? Well, the sun comes out of the Sven's game from really doing anything, but the supernova is also out. From him, this is a GPK jumps in and dumps a hell of a lot of damage into the side of Alliance. I'm not sure they can fight into this one as the Yule's gonna save the DP from the initial engagement. Now the arena comes down, they've got GPK, he's trapped inside the arena and the juggernaut will slice him up. No more grandma, and now they look for more. Ilya's trying to get himself away, a collector kid as well, knowing that he needs to fight. He's got a BKB, I think he has to throw it out here. Looking to bring down, oh, that's a big crit. Bye bye, FNG. And they only look on towards Nico, baby. He, of course, has his Aegis, not the ideal target, but if they can kill him, they might as well. But now he gets off the Omni Slash, or Quick flash story as he jumps back behind them. Ilya's in some trouble, but the crit saves him, but the crit swarm kills him anyway. Now, but can they hold this high ground? That is a question. Three heroes alive on Virtus Pro, three heroes alive on Alliance. They give the cheese over towards Nico, baby. Lincoln's as well, popped on him as well, just to give him every single ounce of protection they possibly can. And it looks like they are going to be able to finish off this barracks, leading Virtus Pro with a base in tatters and mega creeps on the doorstep. Oh. That is so for VP now. This is this is not what you want to be fighting up against. The Megas Alliance can just control this. They can wait as long as the next ages if they want to. Farm out the map. But they want to keep going while Snap is dead. They still have the Army Slash. But they there's a buyback though on Snapfire. They could possibly take a 4v5 has it. or 4v3 fight. Dog Gosh, they're, they're a bit hesitant. They're, they're trying to sure? <laughs> They're chilling. <laughs> They yeah. are still in. Oh, Limp's they got, got another the exorcism? Oh, okay. All right. Well, yeah, they're going for it, but uh, yeah, the snap fire back in 15 seconds. They're poking, they're prodding, they're doing everything except committing. Both teams playing do si -do. Tickle fight, yeah, Supernova. Pillow fight. <laughs> Three seconds. And yeah, Phoenix no, is level 20, so you got that Sunray during the Supernova. That's the one that was doing so much damage to the Juggernaut, by the way, in the last fight. Um, so that's something at least for VP right now and they can definitely hold off these megas for now Alliance they're gonna want to secure this game So I really do expect them to just wait for that Roshan to be back up. I know it's gonna be a long time, but When you're in a situation like this, you're not gonna want to rush things They see the double damage and Nicker babies he's got to be tempted at the same time no, yeah, they're playing against Megas, yeah, just take it slow, take it slow. The thing is, they can't really leave their, leave their base, but... Oh, big, big butt. There's a Rapier. The first Ooh, the Rapier Sven? from Virtus. Oh, it that's is gigantic. The reason why he's not been able to kill this Juggernaut up until now is because of that Butterfly. He did not go for MKB, so now this Rapier, he drops it, he doesn't want to show it. <laughs> yeah, but... Yep. They can get a surprise kill onto Jug. Yeah, I know it's a rough situation for BP, you know, got any buildings, but you have the damage to be able to fight back into Alliance, and Alliance know that. You see them just controlling up high grounds. They want BP to come out of the base first. Yeah, and uh, Granny wants a rapier as well. They want to have yeah, the, that's uh, the big two. Empire, low, 3x, low shredder. He's pain, it is painful. If you don't go now, then you're going to be fighting into two rapiers, which actually sounds very difficult. And see, this is where it comes down to the Juggernaut straight off the bat, but he does manage to get out the spin, but there's so much damage coming out from the spell. They can crit him down. Bye-bye, Nico, baby. Good night, baby. As uh, the Supernova comes down, some of those kisses, tickling S4. Doing a bit more than tickling S4. Murdering S4 seems more active, but there we go. We have destruction coming through, but Sage just jumps on his face. Says what's up, but Lim is completely untouched on the side of this fight. The is going to come through as the spin trying to look for a target, but he's broken up, taken down. Not much he can do here as he's being controlled up so well, bouncing around all over the place. Can you find a target? He's getting absolutely mauled by 
destroy everything and he will fall right here on the deck and they will be taken up by S4 who's now looking to slam it into the face of GPK getting around the back spear across to the side GPK being thrown around all over the place the management comes out from hand skin as well and S4 will be raiding on the other side with a rapier gun for a to finish the job buyback from GPK but the base is in tatters as Nico Baby takes down DM DM buying back into this one Nico Baby going for the tier fours now it's a four versus four but the carry is not there on the side of Virtus Pro and the support is not there from the side of Alliance. The, the scales are clearly balanced in Alliance's favor. GPK trying to do what she can, but unfortunately, there's just not enough available in the tank as she'll throw her body in as they please stop attacking our ancient. But Alliance, they don't care. They're going to keep on going for it and they will take down the ancient and not Virtus Pro out of the tournament.